What's up? It's Amir. Amir. From Virginia. From Virginia. Hey, everybody. Hey, Amir. I remember you. Your wife just uh, yeah, high on the show and said, I really so need to talk I, to Amir. But what is it? Joking. Go what ahead. What did you say? Go ahead, Amir. All right. Thank you. Uh, no, I wanted to, t to talk about my trip to Brazil. All right, tell us. So I, oh, thank you, baby. All right. You're welcome. See you later. Oh, good to talk to you. So I, uh. Amir, your wife is I always went, talking to you uh, when you call the show. I, dude, I'm sorry. Life just worked out that way. I understand. I, I apologize. All right, you go know. ahead. Sorry, go on. All right. So I uh, went to Brazil for a month to visit uh, my wife's family, and it was a lovely, uh, gorgeous, uh, you know, uh, reunion. But uh, we went, uh, we actually, we got back the day before uh, the uh, fake January 6th thing. Okay. Right? So, like, and we left out of Sao Paulo as well, where uh, Lula was. So what, what do you mean by I fake? Kind of wanted to, what uh, do you mean by fake? Yeah. What What do you mean? Oh, I mean uh, that it wasn't even like uh, there were a lot of people that came into Rio, like Bolsonaro supporters or whatever. What I mean by fake is like I, I no one could quite understand the purpose of it, right? Like. Like, at least on January 6th, there was an intention to, like, we're going to try to, like, stop the vote of, you know, the, the electoral count. And we're going to try to hang Mike Pence so that he can't certify. Right. You know what I mean? Brian Muir. They, they had it. They, Brian Muir came on and said that um, there were two elements. One, they, they padded the numbers with uh, uh, unhoused people that they paid and that. Um, right. the idea was they wanted the military, they, they were using this as a pretext to invite the military to take control, uh, hoping that this, that there was enough impetus in yeah. the military to essentially do a military coup that the military was only looking for an excuse. And they were basically trying to provide the excuse. That, that's what the, the, the story that Brian Muir, uh, so I have I have two I have two things to say about that. Okay. Number one, my wife's father uh, actually worked for Bolsonaro. Hmm. Okay, my father-in-law. He's a, a a great guy, a great man. But he he's one of those guys like you know when when right wingers talk about like the deep state or whatever, and they're like this guy's a career. You know he he's still working in Lula's administration. <laughs> okay, it's not like I got you. He's like a fat. You know what I mean? He's a civil so, servant. So yeah, he's he's a government guy, right? So um, so I kept showing him things from insane right wingers, like you know Bolsonaro, Bolsonaristas are under attack or whatever, and he's like you people will believe anything like like he was saying none of that is true nobody is like you know like and then um let me tell you here's here's one thing that struck me is like you know I, it's not surprising that certain people want to keep their status in life i mean that's kind of the way they look at it that they're her my wife's family's part of a uh you know, upper mil the upper m middle class, military, ruling class. One of her uh, cousins is like uh, 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 high up in the military. Right. And we went to his house and it was dope, man. And like, you know, I, so I get it. Right. But at the end of the day, this dude is like laughing at the. We're sitting there eating delicious, fresh seafood stew. And this dude is laughing at the idea that, like, anybody would rally for, you know, Bolsonaro. And this is, mind you, two days before any of the, uh, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, January 8th or whatever. This is two days before. So, so what you were saying, like, I, I like... That that was their intention, but they did not have the support among the 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 
government officials or the military. Well, it's, I, 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 it certainly feels like they did not have the um, the the support of the military, and and I think you know part of that may have been uh, you know Lula moving quickly um, to to minimize the amount of time that anybody who was sort of advocating for that would have. I, because I mean, this, I imagine, I imagine uh, and this is just the way that I would sort of like, you know, imagine it would go down or at least the way they were thinking is the, the capital is stormed by what is supposed to be perceived as like, you know, masses of people. And and mind you, I imagine there's also a great amount of uh, of delusion on behalf of Bolsonaro, like uh, uh, that the, the 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 capital is stormed. It provides the predicate for the military. But if there are Bolson Bolsonaristas in the military, they they probably could not talk about an insurrection, you know, or a coup too freely. Right. You can only do it with people that you're absolutely sure are on your side, because otherwise you are you could you could end up in jail. Um, and but in that moment, that might be the moment where you start to feel people out like maybe we should take over the government here. You're not saying we should impose yeah. Lula, but you're saying well, maybe we need to take control here. And you're looking around and that you need a couple of hours. Maybe you need five, maybe six. I don't know. Seven, eight, uh, ten to convince people like things are getting really out of hand. And we also Lula, I think there's definitely, sure there's definitely some discussions. Right, uh, right. I and but the thing is, discussions. Lula sends in the cops, uh, you know, when he's when it's clear that there's like some slowness on the military to, to respond and basically preempts that that those conversations, because by the time people get around to like, maybe we should be taken over. There's no sort of like predicate or justification for that taking over. And so that's where they failed. You got to remember, like, you know, this is not this is not the A team necessarily. Um, <laughs> you don't always get the A team, but it's yeah, also absolutely. it's you also need it. Like, I, like, all, like the state determines the meaning of these things. I mean, like with Jefferson Cow, we were talking about all these things that we we think of as riots, but actually they were coups. Why? Because the state, the white supremacists had power of the state and decided, oh, actually that riot is uh, something that we're going to recognize as valid. And that's right. still, and that's why, like, I find it right. like the Jan Six or Jan Eight stuff. The the hair splitting between if it really had a chance or if it didn't. Like, I still think it's like I I kind of think that's beside the point because it is. Really really the, uh, the the array of power that determines what the meaning of these sort of stunts. And and, and certainly the people hey, who hey, did hey, that. Look, hey, look, hey, look, ain't nobody going to, you know, I, I, I'm the first person to talk about the seriousness of January 6th. I had people working for me that went on site that day because that was the only way that they could get paid. And I said, I will pay your wages. Just get out of there, because I, I I was watching the footage from home. Wait a second. You know so you had I mean? people who worked for you who were there, and 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 that's the only way they could get paid. I'm not. I don't follow. I worked for the Library of Congress, and I had contract staff working under me. Oh. And the only and and so they're literally right there, but their their basic exit is the same metro exit that oh, 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 Creek. Oh, I see. So I was like, you need to get out right now. Like, it, like as they were, as they had moved down independence to go actually storm the Capitol, I was like, go get out. Right. Because For their own safety. They had I all see what congregated. You're right. They had all congregated outside like Cannon and like, that's, you know, that's outside a... the library of Congress. You remember, you remember I mean, shit. We had that. We had basically had a terrorist attack yep. on the Library of Congress uh, with that guy sitting out outside of his car. Me and my family, I moved us down to Richmond, and I commute uh, uh, now into the office. Well, a couple I, of days a week. Amir, I appreciate the. I appreciate the call. Go talk to your wife, please. I, I want to yell at you. Well, some more. Well, you, you'll have an opportunity in the future, but honestly, stop. Uh, All right. I'm concerned about uh, how the way you're treating. I mean, she, <laughs> she needs to talk to you. Okay, she needs to talk to you. 
Oh, my wife? No, yeah. she just she was talking about some shit that she bought from uh, Walmart. Well, she wants to show it to you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, act oh, like thanks. Stop, okay, buddy. Stop being right. so dismissive. I love you. Hey, it's right, that's some shit. I love you guys. Uh, like, uh, how, how dismiss, hey. dismissive he is of something that she was excited about showing him, and he doesn't care. That's you got to get your act together. But uh, you know, the point is that it, it is it is both beside the point and also impossible to predict yeah. how um, if there was a chance for it to be successful because. It's not going to be successful until it is. It's, it's really one of those type of situations. Brooks Brothers because, Riot shouldn't have been successful. Exactly. Exactly. There's also not some like static level of achievement that's going to d- determine success. It's all completely contextual. It's like not a video game level. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes you don't know. Well, you, you never know going into it the what what those other elements are that need to happen whether they're going to happen or not you're predicting that they can you think you've created an environment or a context in which those things happen and you don't know and 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 also even in retrospect we don't know was there is there was there a linchpin was there an individual or two or five or ten individuals who if they had made a slightly different decision that day if those secret service guys had said had not been forceful enough and 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 allowed Trump to go to the Capitol, would that would that have made a difference? We don't know. We really don't know. We can come up with theories on this stuff, but it that's why, you know, the the question is not whether it was successful. I, I think this is Matt's point, is it's not really a question of how successful it was or it wasn't. It's that the attempt in and of itself Mm-hmm. is the most problematic aspect of this because we never know whether the context or what it would take to, to, to you know, well, the whole story of like World War uh, One was just a function of one guy, you know, following the wrong directions to go down to uh, the, whatever it was, the palace. And that was it. If they had gone a different, if they had taken a right somewhere, none of that would have, you know, yeah. none of that would have happened. Like, like, yeah, the Jan 6 stuff, I mean, change a few variables. Think, uh, let's say Trump didn't give the GOP their final Supreme Court uh, pick. And uh, also Bernie Sanders was uh, the person that uh, was going up against Trump. I don't know necessarily that they would have uh, gone along with Trump and um, sort of ha- helped the self-coup. But it would have changed the conversations behind the scenes for a lot of those people, I think. Uh, it's impossible to know. All of these things are unknown. And, that uh, you, you know, it's like... Would this brush fire have, uh, you know, when this person tried to light this thing on fire, would it have actually burned down the forest? Well, you know what? You really don't, um, y- you know, arguing like, well, it rained a week and a half ago, so the ground was probably still too damp for the fire to start. No, we basically say you can't have fires here. Right. Uh, a lot of people writing in, should Sam be giving <laughs> marriage advice? You know, sometimes there's, <laughs> sometimes there's lessons you can learn in failure. I mean, let's be honest, folks. I mean, failure may be too strong of a word, or it may not be. But um, it, it... A scout familiar with the signs of this trail. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Um, that was beautiful. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of Donald Trump, 